how to break the worry habit before it breaks you chapter 6 how to crowd worry out of your ma of how to crowd worry out of your mind i shall never forget the night I, a few years ago when marion j douglas was a student in one of my classes i have not just his I just not use his real name. He requested me for personal reasons not to reveal his identity. But here is his real story as he told it before one of the our adult education classes. He told us how tra tragedy had stuck at his home not once but twice the first time he had lost his five-year-old daughter, a child he adored. He and his wife thought they couldn't endure that first loss, but as he said ten months later, God gave us another little girl and she died in five days. This double bravement was almost too much to bear. I couldn't take it, his father told us. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I couldn't rest or relax. My nerves were utterly shaken and my confidence gone. At last he went to doctor. One recommended sleeping pills, another recommended a trip. He tried both, but neither remedy helped. He said, my body felt as if it were encased in a voice and the jaws of the voice were being drawn tighter and tighter. The tension of grief, if you have ever been paralyzed by sorrow, you know what he meant. But thank God I had one child left, a four-year-old son. He gave me the solution to my problem one afternoon as I sat around feeling sorry for myself. He asked, Daddy, will you build a boat for me? I was in no mood to build a boat. In fact, I was in no mood to do anything. But my son is persistent, little fellow. I had to give in. Building that toy boat too took about three hours. By the time it was finished, I realized that those three are spent, spent building that both were the first hours of mental relaxation and peace that I had had in months. That discovery jarred me out of the liturgy and caused me to do a bit of thinking, the first real thinking I had done in months. I realized that it is difficult to worry while you are busy doing something that requires planning, thinking. In my case, building the boat had knocked worry out of the ring, so I resolved to keep busy. The following night, I went from room to room in the house, compiling a list of jobs that ought to be done, scores of items needed to be repaired, bookcases, stairs, taps, stomps, window, window shades, knobs, locks, leaky taps astonishing as it seems in the course of two weeks i had made a list of 242 items that needed attention during the last two years i have completed most of them besides i have filled my life with stimulating activities two nights per week i attend adult education classes in new york i have gone in for civic activities in my hometown and I'm now chairman of the school board. I attended scores of meetings. I helped collect money for the Red Cross and and no time for worry. That is exactly what Winston Churchill said when he was working 18 hours a day at the height of the war. When he was asked if he worried about his tremendous responsibility, he said, I'm too busy. I have no time to worry. Charles Catherine was in the same six when he started out to invent a self-starter for 
automobile mr catherine was until his mr catherine was until his recent retirement vice president of general motors in charge of the world famous general motors research corporation but in those days he was so poor that he had to use the hayloft of a barn as a laboratory to buy groceries he had to use 1500 dollars that his wife had made by giving piano lessons later had to borrow 500 dollars on his life insurance i asked his wife if she wasn't worried at the time like that yes she replied i was so worried i couldn't sleep but mr catherine wasn't he was too absorbed in his work to worry the great scientist pastor spoke of the peace that is found in libraries and laboratories why is peace found there because the men in libraries and laboratories are usually too absorbed in their tasks to worry about themselves research men rarely have nervous breakdown they haven't time for such luxuries why does such a simple thing as keeping busy help to drive out anxiety because of a law one of the most fundamental law ever revealed by psychology and that law is that is utterly impossible for any human being no matter how brilliant to think of more than one thing at any given time you don't quite believe it very well then let's try an experiment suppose you lean right back now close your eyes and try at the same instant to think of the status of liberty and what you plan to do tomorrow morning go ahead and try it you found out didn't you that you could focus on either thought in turn but never on both simultaneously well the same thing is true in the field of emotion we cannot be pepped up and enthusiastic about doing something exciting and feel dragged down by worry at the very same time what kind of one kind of emotion drives out the other and it was that simple discovery that enable army sacrus sacrates to perform such miracles during the war when me men came out of the battle so shaken by the experience that they were called psychotic army doctors prescribed keep him busy as a cure every walking minute of these nerve struck men was filled with activity usually outdoor activities such as fishing hunting playing ball golf taking pictures making garden and dancing they were giving no time for brooding over their terrible experience occupational therapy is the term now used by psychiatry 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 when work is prescribed as stroke it was a medicine it was not new the old greek physician were advocating it 500 years before chris was born the quaker were using it in philadelphia in ben franklin time a man who visited a quaker sanatorium in 1774 was shocked to see that the patient who were mentally ill were busy spinning flax he thought these poor unfortunate were being exploited until the quaker explained that they found that their patient actually improved when they did a little work it was soothing to the nerve any psychiatrist will tell you that work keeping busy is one of the best anesthetic ever known for sick nerves henry w longfellow found that out for himself when he lost his young wife 
His wife had been melting some sealing wax at a candle one day when her cloth caught on fire. Longfellow heard her cries and tried to reach her in time, but she died from the burn for a while. Longfellow was so tortured by the memory of that dreadful experience that he nearly went insane, but fortunately for him, his three small children needed his attention. In spite of his own grief, Longfellow undertook to be father and mother to his children. He took them for walk, told them stories, played games with them, and immortalized their uh, companionship, companionship in his poem. The children's are, he also translate Dante and all these duties combined kept him so busy that he forget himself entirely and regain his peace of mind as Tencent declared when he lost his most intimate friend Arthur Hallam. I must lose myself in action lest I wither in despair. Most of us have little trouble losing ourselves in action while we have our noses to the grand stone and are doing our day work, but the hours after work they are the dangerous one. Just when we are free to enjoy our own leisure and out to be happiest that when the blue devils of worry attack us, that's when we begin to wonder whether we are gathering anywhere in life, whether we are in route, whether the boss meant anything by that remark he made a bit today, or whether we are getting bald. When we are not busy, our mind tend to become a near vacuum. Every student of physics know that nature abhor a vacuum. The nearest thing to a vacuum that you that you and I will probably ever see is the side of the incandescent electric light blurb. Break that blurb and nature forces air in to fill the theoretical empty space. Nature also rushes in to fill the vacant mind with what usually with emotions why because emotions of worry fear hate jealousy and envy are driving by primal rigor and the dynamic energy of the jungle such emotions are so violent that they tend to drive out of your mind all peaceful nappy thoughts and emotions James L. Mercer, professor of education, teacher, College Columbia, puts it very well when he say, Worry is most apt to write you rage not when you are in action, but when the day work is done, your imagination can run right when, then and bring up all sort of ridiculous possibilities and magnify each little blunder. At such a time, he continues, your mind is like a motor operating without its load. It races and threatening to burn out. It's bearing or even to tear itself to bits. The remedy for worry is to get completely occupied doing something constructive. But you don't have to be a college professor to realize this should and put it into practice. During the war, I met a housewife from Chicago who told me how she discovered for herself that the remedy for worry is to get completely occupied doing something constructive. I met this woman and her husband in the dining car while I was <coughs> I met this woman and her husband in the dining car while I was traveling from New York to my farm in Missouri. Sorry I didn't get their names. I never like to give uh, examples without using names and street addresses, details that give authenticity to a story. This couple told me that their son had joined the armed forces 
The day after Pearl Harbor, the woman told me that she had almost wrecked her wealth, health worrying over that only son. Where was he? Was he safe or in action? Would he be wounded, killed? When I was, when I asked her how she overcome her worry, she replied, I got busy. She told me that at first she had dismissed her maid and tried to keep busy by doing all her housework herself, but that didn't help much. The trouble was she said that I could do my housework almost mechanically without using my mind so I kept on worrying while making the beds and washing the dishes I realized I needed some new kind of work that that would keep me busy both mentally and physically every hour of the day so I That would keep me busy both mentally and physically every hour of the day. So I took a job as a saleswoman in a large department store. That did it. She said, I immediately found myself in a wire wind of activity. Customers swarming around me asking for price, size, colors, never a second to think of anything except my immediate duty and when night came i could think of anything except getting of getting of my aching feet as soon as i ate dinner i fell into bed and instantly became unconscious i had i had neither the time nor the energy to worry she discovered for herself what john cooper paus meant when he said in the art of forgetting the unpleasant, a certain comfortable security, a certain profound inner peace, a kind of happy numbness soothing the nerve of the human animal when absorbed in its allotted thoughts. Osa Johnson had discovered the same truth that Tennyson had sung about a centuries earlier. I must lose myself I must lose myself in action lest I return in despair. Admiral Byrd discovered this same truth when he lived all alone for five months in a shack that was literally buried in the great glacial ice cap that covers the South Pole, an ice cap that holds nature, all the secrets, an ice cap covering an unknown continent larger than the United States and Europe combined. Admiral Byrd spent five months there alone. No other living creatures of any kind existed within a hundred miles. The old, the cold was so intense that he could hear his breath freeze and crystallize as the wind blew it past his ears. In this book alone, in his book alone, Admiral Byrd tells all about those five months he spent in the bewildering and soul shattering darkness. The day was the day were as black as the night and he had to keep busy to preserve his sanity. At night, he said before blowing out the lantern, I formed the habit of blocking out the more work. It was a case of assigning myself an hour, say, to the escape tunnel, half an hour to living drift, an hour to straightening up the fuel drums, an hour to cutting bookshelves, in the walls of the food tunnel and two hours of renewing a broken bridge in the men hauling sledge. It was wonderful, he said, to be able to dole out time in this way. It brought me an extraordinary sense of command over myself and he adds without that or equivalent the days would have been without purpose and without purpose they 
would have ended as such days always and in this integration note that last again without purpose the days would have ended as such days always and in this integration if you and i are worried let's remember that we can use good old-fashioned work as a medicine that was said by no less an authority than the late dr richard c cabot formerly professor of clinical medical medicine at harvard in his book what men live by dr cabot say as a physician i have had the happiness of seeing work cure many persons who have suffered from trembling palsy of the soul which result from overmastering doubts hesitation vac vacillation and fear courage given us by courage given us by our work is like the self reliance which Emerson has made for ever, ever, ever glorious. If you and I don't keep busy, if we sit around and bored, we all hatch out a whole flock of what Charles Darwin used to call the Viber Gibbers. And Viber Gibbers are the nothing but old fashioned gremlins that will run us hollow and destroy our power of action or our action of will i know a businessman in new york who found the weber gibbers by getting so busy that he had no time to fight and score his name is trimper longman and his office is at 40 Ball Street. He was a student in one of my adult education classes, and his talk on conquering worry was so interesting, so impressive that I asked him to have supper with me after class. He sat in a restaurant until long past midnight discussing his experiences. Here is the story he told me 18 years ago. I was so worried. I had insomnia. I was tense, irritated, and jittery. I felt I was headed for a nervous breakdown. I had reason to be worried. I was treasurer of the Crown Food and Extract Company, 418 West Broadway, New York. We had half a million dollars invested in strawberries packed in gallon tins. For 20 years, we had been selling these gallon tins of strawberries to manufacturers of ice cream. Suddenly, our sales stopped because the big ice cream makers such as National Dairy and Borden were rapidly increasing their production and were saving money and time by buying strawberries packed in barrels. Not only were we left with half a billion dollars in berries we couldn't sell, but we were also under contract to buy a million dollars more of strawberries in the next 12 months we had already borrowed. 3 lakh 50,000 from the bank we couldn't possibly pay off or renew these loans. No, no wonder I was worried. I rushed out to Wensoval, California, where our factory was located and tried to persuade our president that condition had changed, that we were facing ruin. He refused to believe it. He blamed our New York office for all the trouble to our salesmanship. After days of pleading, I finally persuaded him to stop packing more strawberries and to sell our new supply. On the fresh berry market in San Francisco, that almost solved our problem. I should have been able to stop worrying then. Then I couldn't worry is a habit and I had that habit. When I returned to New York, I began worrying about everything. The cherries we were buying in Italy, the pineapples we were buying in Hawaii and so on. I was tense. Jittery couldn't sleep, and as I have already said, I was heading for a nervous breakdown. 
I despair, I adopt a way of life that cure my insomnia and stop my worries. I got busy, I got so busy with problems demanding all my faculties that I had no time to worry. I had been working 7 hours a day. I now begin working 15 and 16 hours a day. I got down to the office every morning at 8 o'clock and stayed there every night until almost midnight i took on new duties new responsibilities when i got home at midnight i was so exhausted when i fell in bed that i became unconscious in a few seconds i kept up this program for about three months i had broken the habit of worry by that time so i returned to a normal working day of seven or eight hours this event occurred 18 years ago i have never been troubled with insomnia worry since then george bernard shaw was right he summed it all up when he said the secret of being miserable is to have the leisure to bother about whether you are happy or not so don't bother to think about it split on your hand and get busy your blood will start circulating your mind will start taking and pretty soon his whole positive upsurge of life in your body will drive worry from your mind get busy keep busy in it is the cheapest kind of medicine there is on this earth and one of the best to break the worry habit here is rule number one keep busy the wor worried person must lose himself in action lest be with their in despair